What's good with the YouTube? You already know. Big flock over the convicts perspective. And I'm smashing, dashing, sliding on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, something was recently released by federal authorities at the end of a trial. And they're talking about something that was called a home incinerator, the pizza oven. So basically, days before the former Hells Angel, Fresno chapter president is set to be sentenced for aiding the cremation of a man who was murdered by other club members. Federal prosecutors have dropped a bombshell alleging that a funeral director informed the FBI there were four such illegal cremations. Whew, crazy shit, man. Federal authorities believe they know the identities of all four bodies, all former Hells Angels who are either listed as missing persons or murder victims. This is all according to court records, guys. This news revelations came days before a sentencing for 54-year-old Merle Hefferman, a former president of the Fresno Hells Angels, who has pleaded guilty to obstructing justice by arranging the cremation of Livermore resident Joel Silva. This was done after another Hells Angels, Brian Went, shot Silva in the back of the head inside the clubs in Fresno. And according to jury transcripts, this goes all the way back, right, to um, a hatch plan on the East Coast when Silva's erratic behavior became too much for the biker gang to ignore. I guess he was acting up, they're saying, and um, they felt it was time for him to go. Now, so two of the four possible other bodies that they're claiming, right, the FBI, right, according to phone records, right, and in interviews and whatnot, they believe an individual named Robbie Huff, who was last seen in the Fresno area, who allegedly aided basically the, the cremation of Silva back in 2014 by burning his pickup truck afterwards. So basically, they think that he's one of the potentially four people that was pretty much uh, ran through the, what they're calling the pizza oven. The second man named by federal prosecutors was Arthur Karasis. Oh, wow. Trip, that's my um, sister-in-law. just date this dude. He was last seen in 2016 in Madera County, which borders on the Fresno County. He was well liked out there in Pittsburgh, man. Um, that's a trip. I know, I know exactly who they're talking about. He's a, he's a long old timer. He actually went nomad, right? And to my all, to my knowledge, man, he went by Art. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. If you're from the nine uh, to five area code, next individual was an individual named Guevara, who was last seen. Wearing black shirt, blue denim jeans, black Adidas shoes, and a Hell's Angel motorcycle jacket. Hefferman attorney vehemently denied that his client had anything to do with the clandestine cremations, except for the one he's already pled guilty to, and called the prosecution's office on this. Basically, basically his attorney's been in contact with the feds, just trying to sit there and say, "Hey, ma'am, my, my client had nothing to do with anything that's being alleged, and that these are basically frivolous rumors." He's, they're saying, right? Not credible. Now, um, James Bustamante wrote in his sentencing memo, he said the prosecution failed to mention in the court filing that the funeral home owner also gave FBI interviews. So they're saying that this was never put in the disclosure, which it should have been put in the disclosure. But court records show that informants have been telling the FBI for years that they were other dead bodies that met the same fate as Silva. They allegedly referred to it as the pizza oven, a coded phrase that has shown up time and time again in court filings. Unsealed FBI paperwork and testimony in two trials that resulted in convictions against four people for the involvement in Silva's murders. Now, apparently, it was a cluster of calls between Hefferman and the funeral home director on July 8, 2016, the day after Gross was last seen. The director testified at a grand jury hearing that a fourth body was delivered to the home wrapped in plastic and duct tape, but that he couldn't remember exactly when this took place. But recently, unsealed court records offers a never-before-seen glimpse into just how deep the federal investigation went. They say Hardesty, during an interview with the FBI, reported that Went had offered him a green light to use the pizza oven as he pleased. He said Went gave him a number to call and use a code phrase, cooking pizza, to get preparation started for an illicit cremation. Another informant claimed that he had heard talk of an oven and Went having killed two Hells Angel members, but didn't offer more specifics. Hefferman knew that the Hells Angels needed to destroy evidence of murders. He made efforts to address that need, and in Joel's civil, he succeeded, as well as several other cases. 
So basically what's been, you know, indicated by the FBI is that they believe that out of four tall people of the cremations that were done, they believe that one was um, Robbie Huff, right? One was Juan Guevara. One was uh, Arthur Carissas. I always say his name messed up, right? Arthur, long time AJ, as well as the Joe Civil case, man. So with them knowing this information, I think that there's going to be more indictments to follow. But I think they're trying to connect all the dots. But they believe that these are the individuals because what they were able to do is the time when these individuals went missing, right? They were able to connect the dots with conversations with the funeral parlor, right? And the amount of traffic and, and conversations that were going around those times was a lot more heavily than normal. Now, these are just allegations that the FBI is making. It's going to be kind of hard to um, bring forth the case because it all, it's all circumstantial. You know, the pizza oven, whatever, the cremation place has been known to be used before. They had codes. Um, they've had a traffic of, of bodies that weren't accounted for. But you can't really prove how these people died, how they got there. Unless you have all the other ends that connect the dots, it's going to be a kind of hard case to try to try to file. And that's probably why they haven't filed yet. But as they get more information from informants and people who want to, you know, saying release the truth of what happened or they're probably going to put pressure on this um, former uh, Fresno County president. You're going to see what's going to happen. It's like I said, it's a good storyline, but it's still an assumption. There's no proven facts. And this is coming from the media and it's coming from the FBI. Now, even if they feel that these alleged missing in action people, right, were you were pretty much processed through the cremation the whole thing is who killed them though that's the whole thing what was the purpose what was the motive who was involved so they haven't been able to really paint those fucking pictures you know that's gonna be needed in the courtroom now i've seen people get found guilty of murder without even a body being found based upon the uh, the belief you know what i'm saying and you know the proof of witnesses what they've seen and so forth that would indicate that the, the victim probably died in this case, you you don't have who the aggressor is or who the person is that maybe committed this murder. It's all hearsay, and it's all circumstantial. You don't even know if those were the bodies that went through there. They're assuming. So at the end of the day, it's going to be kind of hard for the federal courts to try to or the federal prosecutors to try to file charges. I don't I don't see how they're going to be able to do it unless they get more information through their sources. And sources aren't going to help a case if it's all just hearsay. That can't be admissible in court. It has to be someone who witnessed, you know, a victim being attacked or witnessed that a person was being trafficked there to be fucking cremated. You don't have none of that information at anybody's dis disclosure at this time, you know? Now, and seeing one of the names that they mentioned, man, Art's been a long time, man, H.A. member, you know? I mean, he's gone out to Stockton and start, set up shop for them. He's gone to different places. He's gone as a nomad, originally from 95. Like I said, he used to um, he used to date my sister in law. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my sister in law used to date a couple of heavy hitters out there, man. Another another dude she dated was an AB, believe it or not. Who still who watches this channel? It's funny. Anyway, a former AB. Anyways, um, yeah, man, this is crazy though. Um, when I heard that name, that kind of shocked me because he wasn't someone that who just had maybe like eight years, ten years. He had probably over thirty years, forty years, at least, easily. Old timer, you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember having to kind of deal with some of those individuals. One of my boys, right, um, I'm not going to say his name, right, but he took, took some of their bikes one time, <laughs> and they showed up at his house looking for one of the bikes, and then they let my boy chunk him with the dude, right? And the reason why was because Art liked my dude, man, because uh, there was this dude out there in um, Pittsburgh and in, in, uh, Antioch who was doing some of that, um, that hard pimp game, right, on, on young females, and he was a straight, the dude's a straight killer. He's, he's locked up for murder right now, named, named Silent. Anybody knows knows who I'm talking about? Silent from Antioch, Pittsburgh, black dude. He's definitely was with the action, right? But like I said, I was out there with my boy, but we, we wasn't playing around at that time. And um, motherfuckers were, were uh, uh, out there doing what they do, right? You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to uh, knock motherfuckers down out there, put it that way. And um, I guess that's why he had a little bit of respect for my boy. And... Um, yeah, I knew that. I knew that they had a little car MC club out there, scavengers. Man, I used to go to a spot where one of them was at, and I almost had issues with one of them one time, man. And uh, that that dude's supposed to be with it too, though. But for some reason, um, you know, no issues and shit, man. When grown men talk, you're able to get through things. 
Anyways, this case, this whole accusations by the feds and all that, man, it's crazy. Just the details of pizza, ordering a pizza and that, you know, you know, I kind of believe that if there's, there's four, there's maybe more, who knows, man. But like I said, all this is just hearsay. It's coming from um, individuals that have, you know, relinquished information. Also, so, as well as someone who worked at that funeral home. So I'm sure they're going to investigate, but it's going to kind of be hard for them to kind of build any case right now, I think, man. You know, um, I th- think the worst case would be maybe fucking tampering with evidence they could maybe file or, you know what I'm saying, not reporting a dead body. I, I don't know how they're going to file charges on this, man, and who's going to be, be held accountable. There's a couple of names that the, you know, San Jose Mercury News mentioned. But still, at the same token, you'd have to think there'd be more people and that there's still people that were involved that nobody knows. Anyways, with that said, I'm gone. Local Convict's perspective. Have a good one.